there's, there's something in this particular short that I thought was interesting, especially to black men, considering that uh, how we're raised, how we're socialized around how we uh, engage women. And he said some interesting things. He wasn't talking directly to black men. I thought it definitely applied. So uh, let's check out this piece from Psychax and uh, give you some commentary about it. Here we go. Being vulnerable are treating the other person like a priest or like a confessor, which is I want to put these, and this is actually a, a male romantic fantasy that I fell prey to when I was younger, which is I want to put all of my failings and weaknesses um, and flaws at your feet, milady, so that you can tell me that I'm still good enough, that you can tell me that you still love me despite all of these things. Tell me, like, look at these 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 bad things about me, or look at these uh, these less than attractive or desirable things. Right. So he's he's you know he's talking about a mix of worship and validation, which I think in many ways is something that we've been programmed with and socialized with. And this does apply to males across race in many respects in the West, because from childhood through, you know, through really college, the majority of our, you know, uh, lead uh, is taken by women. So we learn from a young age to take direction from women and women's feelings, emotions, perceptions, how, you know, all of that uh, very much dictates our quality of life. I'm going to let him finish and then we'll talk about it. And tell me that you can see past them. Tell me that it's okay which is basically like treating the woman like a god, which is, oh, you know, Jesus, I, I'm a, this terrible sinner, but please, you know, save me. Please, please love me anyway, on some level. And women don't operate that way. They're not divine. No, and like I said, it was a short, so it ended there. It's probably a portion of a longer video, but I just wanted to talk about that real quick because what he pointed out was, as he pointed out, a form of worship. And this is what boys, particularly in the black community, learn particularly when we're raised by, you know, uh, groups of women, we're raised by a household of women, a family mostly of women. And of course, we go to school and we learn from teachers that are majority women. What we learn is a form of worship, but we also learn that our validation, our, our approval needs to be sought from women. By the time, and when you learn these things in childhood, by the time you reach adulthood, you tend to follow through on them on a subconscious level without reflecting on, you know, what you're, you're doing. A lot of us still do things on automatic pilot without even realizing it. And that's one of the things the conversations in these spaces online have forced us to really reflect upon. The things that we do with our eyes closed, right? The things that we don't pay attention to, the things that we've been known to do, continue to do, you know, and don't reflect on uh, simply because it's, it's what we were taught, right? And much of that has influenced us, especially if you were Gen X and you came up in this era of R&B music, again, another another whole lane of female worship. And again, you know, it kind of shapes your relationship to a lot of women. So, you know, it's these kind of spaces that have forced men to really come to terms with how we've thought about relating to women. But in many ways, that's been, you know, the dominant narrative in the culture about how you're supposed to interact with women overall. It's very much seeking your life validation from them while at the same time worshiping them, right? At the same time, you know, seeing them as, as, as giving you approval and direction in life. And women will talk to you that way as well. You know, that you need a woman in your life, especially if you're successful, if you're doing well, well it's twofold. If you're not doing well, you know, I've seen family members tell you, you need a woman to give you direction. Okay? And if you are doing well, if a woman is not benefiting from your largesse and you're doing well, then there's something wrong. You need to settle down. You need a woman in your life. You need to give her those resources, that attention, that energy, so on and so forth. So whichever way you turn, there's still this directive that somehow it's the worship of women that validates your your life. And I've seen this in so many different ways, shapes and forms, you know, uh, even down to kids. You know what I mean? I've seen women, you know, change their whole attitude if they see, you know, you treating a daughter really well. Right. They, they identify with that. Sometimes not as much on sons, but there's something about this kind of notion of pedestalizing females across age, even shout out to Joe from DC. Appreciate that. Uh, shout out, keep up the good work. Appreciate the 50 spot, but there's still this kind of subtle approval. If you're, you're seen given affection and, and different deference to, you know, if you're giving deference to a female, whether it's a child, whether it's a grown woman, or hell, even your mother, some women will even tell you, you know, or even tell each other, you know, see how he treats his mother, you know, Here's the trick. If, if, if you 
if you treat her with high, high respect, that's that's you know that's worthy of validation from her. But if you treat her with more respect than you treat your woman, you're a mama's boy. So there's there's levels to this. But this idea of worship and validation is important, and it's necessary for us to really examine and 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 come to terms with as early as possible, because it's not something you're supposed to think about. It's something you're just supposed to do. And this is some of the things we're calling question to. We're raising question about, and that alone frustrates a lot of women that you're raising questions, right? So the subtext is that you're not a man if you even raise questions about worshiping women or seeking validation from them. You're just supposed to do it on automatic pilot, right? And so one of the reasons we're questioning that, and you're seeing men across race and even class questioning this, right? You, you, you know, the fact that you see a psych hacks making those kinds of videos is a statement unto itself that men are starting to really examine our relationship with women and whether or not it should be radically uh, reframed, which it is. And a lot of women are not happy with that because of that. So just to put that word out, uh, I liked what he said there, but I think it definitely applies to black men on another level um, that it doesn't necessarily apply to other communities because of our particular relationship uh, with our women and, and how that's kind of framed. So anyway, there's that. Shout out to CR Frank, says salute, member for 38 months. Appreciate that. Thank you for being a member that long. Um, let me see. Cynical optimist drops an interesting statement. Says them, why are you still why are you still single? He says, Me, you mean why haven't I willingly given up my hard earned resources to it? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely what it comes down to. Absolutely what it comes down to. So, you know, you'll find that your your status, your favor, all of that is determined on whether or not you're extending resources to uh to women or girls. Our truth is, yep, it's subconscious and ubiquitous. Great topic. Absolutely. All right.